which makes Granny Square me so, so happy. I already know that's way more crochet time than I actually have in the month, let alone admin time. So what do you think? It looks like somebody weed in snow. Future me is gonna see this pay off. <laughs> Hey team, welcome back to HGDC, HG Design to Crochet. I'm Heather and this is my channel all about granny squares, motherhood and running a business with everything else in between. I hope that you're tickety-boo and if you are returning, I hope that you are good, what's happening? I normally say, what's good, what's happening? And if you are brand new here, hi, hello, and welcome to the team. Thank you so much for giving my channel a chance. I am just looking around, surveying the situation. We've got a lot to get through. Okay, so today's chat is a September review. I haven't done one of these traditional sit down crochet chats with you in a while. And I wanted to go through everything that we've been doing in September. You know the usual setup is like finished objects, uh, works in progress, acquisitions, all of that. I'm going to do a HGDC spin on that sit down chat and we're going to keep these going. I have some areas in here that I'm going to talk about that eventually are going to move and expand within the membership that I want to create here on YouTube, like specifically finances, budgeting, and all of the statistics and ins and outs of running a business on, will be on the membership. For now, I'm going to give little bits of that within this just to get started. And then hopefully you'll want to see more and you'll join me on the membership and then I will continue talking specifically about the crochet, so the finished objects, the works in progress, and all of those things here on my YouTube, this part of YouTube. First thing, I have my planner here with me. It's my bestest year yet planner, and I actually reviewed September within this. I have a column for my home, my life, and my business. I'm gonna go through the business review and share it with you and then that will then segue into the topics that I want to talk to you about. Let's go through the chatty bit and then I have projects to share with you along the way. Have you seen that one? I don't think you've seen these. So let's jump in. I did look back at my September goals. I had my income goal which I did actually hit. Um, then I wanted to get my frilly cushion out for testing, which I did. I wanted to finish bags two and three of my subscription squad, not quite there. I wanted to get my planner sleeve ready to go. Didn't even touch it. Okay, so I have milestones, more of, less of, next month's goals and coming up on here. I actually want to change this spread ever so slightly so that I have a section for crochet projects. That box will be fluid so that it works for us as a designer and also as a non-designer. Milestones in September 2024, I've got, I showed up for the sub squad. The sub squad is my subscription and every second month you receive a new bag pattern. I launched it last month, so September was the first month and I showed up and what I mean by that is I went over my old notes on marketing, I refreshed myself, I read a new book on marketing, I made sure that I was like front and centre talking about it on my Instagram, even on the days where I had lots going on in my life and I wanted to just curl away and hide up, I just committed that 10 minutes, I did the post and it paid off, it really did pay off. I have a total of 20 sign-ups and I believe half of them came from this month because I launched the subscription squad early in August on the 15th of August for the Granny Square Day. Look at this sunlight. Anyway, I um, posted about it and opened early sign-ups on Granny Square Day. They remained open and I didn't post about it after Granny Square Day until 
the last two weeks of September, so like the last 15 days, I realised that the signups for bag one were going to be closing and that I hadn't done it justice. So I made myself a plan and I figured out what I was going to be posting and I committed to it and I showed up every single day and that meant that I doubled my signups. So I went from 10 signups to, to 20, which is a huge jump in income and revenue for me. And hopefully everybody will enjoy it and they'll have a great experience and they'll want to remain for bag two, which comes out in November. And hopefully for November, I can increase it as well. But let's not jump into next month too quickly. Um, but I'm really, really proud of myself for doing that because I realized that I'd only posted about it maybe twice. And that received 10 signups, which is amazing. And then I was like, okay, let me do some more. And I received another 10 signups. So I want to thank each and every single one of my sub squad signups. I'm gonna put your names on the screen. Thank you so, so much for signing up, for believing in me and this subscription and for taking a punt almost on the first month. There are no times so that everybody can cancel whenever they want. Um, like I said, I'm really hoping they don't want to cancel. Obviously life happens and if they need the budget for something else, I get that, but I'm hoping that they're gonna wanna stay with me. And we have our first um, sub squad chat on the this Saturday, October the 12th at 10 a.m. So you will have all of those details in your emails, but if you don't, please let me know so that I can send it to you. And that is 10 a.m. BST. We are still in our summer time zone. So that is GMT plus one. <sighs> My next, oof. My next um, milestone for September 2024 was that I called for testers on Frilly. I did it! Next milestone. I had the second highest month so far this year on YouTube. So September was my second highest month for AdSense revenue. The first highest, the largest highest, is that even right? The biggest month for income was May 2024, September 2024 was my second month and October was already off to a really good start and I am seeing more and more subscribers. I saw 16 subscribers on my YouTube channel yesterday alone. So hi to everybody that is new here and now to see it starting to pick up is um, I guess like reassurance that what I'm putting out, people want to see, so. Hopefully in the future, my AdSense is gonna be a good chunk of HTDC in terms of income as well. So it's so encouraging and so exciting to see that. And of course, that means that I want to say a huge, huge thank you to you for watching these videos, because if you didn't, none of this would be possible. So thank you so, so much for showing up and watching them when I post. One of my other big milestones for September is I planned out all of my releases for the remainder of the year. I know exactly what is gonna be going out and when, and that is both very freeing and very overwhelming all at the same time. I am committed. Okay, let's fly through the next sections whilst I sort out this stack of granny squares. More of, I'd like more to do more regular marketing. That worked really well. So the more of section on my planner is like what worked really well last month and that you want to continue doing in the coming month. So more regular marketing. I showed up on my Instagram and I posted about the sub squad and i just i've seen the stats on my instagram skyrocket one of my posts took off and it's just a regular um post like a carousel picture there's not a real i'm not doing any funny dancing nothing like that and that's been seen by like two hundred thousand people which is inc incredible crazy but incredible and Again, I have seen the payout of just showing up rather than being like all or nothing for a week or two and then disappearing or burning out or 
feeling lost or confused i have seen such a payout from doing every single day every single weekday um and then more working on designs my future designs it's always like a, a little bit of a is it even a balance it's always just a little bit of a I don't even know what the word is. These are the motions I'm going with. <laughs> oh dear, have I been watching too much Blippi? I worked on a lot of designs last month, which is great, and I'd like to continue doing that. I wanna do more monthly stat reviews. So at the start of October, I took screenshots of my YouTube, my Instagram, and then I want to keep tracking all of those each month so that I can actually see the growth. Another thing that I want to do more of is sending thank you videos. I reached out to every single sub squad sign up and asked if they had Instagram and then once they shared their account with me I sent them a welcome slash thank you video and I really enjoyed doing them and it was just a way to be able to say in person thank you and I believe everybody really appreciated receiving them as well. And it's something I would like to do more of. Less of, I wanna do less scrolling time and work time. So I am doing my utmost to write down my to-do list before it comes to my work time. Otherwise I find that I'm just scrolling because I'm not even sure where to start. That is working, but I want to reduce my screen time. My screen time is ridiculous. For somebody that spends so much time with my son, I do not know how my screen time is so high. That takes me straight into my next category, which is finished objects, which just so happen to be my items that are also in testing. Whew. We have Frilly. Frilly is my two round join as you go granny square cushion with this absolutely fabulous frill all around it. I use DK weight yarn. I pick my colours at random, make sure they're perfectly curated. My granny square guide teaches you how I do that. Then I added on this frill and I have these ties so that the cushion cover is removable. And I finally called for testers. As I told you, there was a bit of a delay. It's now with testers. I have nine or 10 different testers for this, which is great. I feel like that's a manageable number. And then there was the comfort test, which is this object. This is my comfort cushion. It is, uh, again, double knit yarn. It's two round granny squares and joined using the continuous join as you go method. It has the ties at the bottom. I haven't woven in a single end on this or the frilly one other than for the ties and the frill and I've woven in the ends on the ties. Other than that, not done any of the ends. This has now finished testing and I need to catch up with my testers. And then I want that to be released this month. So that'll be a new release in October. I do not know when to release it. I don't know whether to do it on a weekday or a weekend. So can you let me know below? Do you prefer your releases to come out on a week or a weekend? Does it not matter? Should I just pick what works for us as a family? What else did I work on in September? So my goal was to finish my some of my whips, namely my bag two and three of the subscription squad. <sighs> Feeling a little bit stressed about this one, not gonna lie. I could have had these done ages ago and I wanted to be massively ahead to avoid any stress over deadlines. And I now find myself in a position where I'm stressing over deadlines. Um, yeah. Between illness and a few things going on in our private life, I just haven't really had the headspace or time and I'm now feeling that. Um, so I have bags two and three here. I have this shoulder bag and then I have this tote bag. I am so pleased with them both. Like I designed these, I made these. Wow. We will go with the tote bag because it's further along. I have progressed more of this. I took this apart last month and re-put it back together. I wasn't quite happy with the design 
with like the first sample that I made, I wanted to make some huge changes and improvements, so I did that. The first change that I wanted to make was I wanted to add in a row of granny squares in here. I should probably talk about that actual bag first, shouldn't I? This is a continuous join as you go granny square project using two round granny squares. They are using a 4.5 mil hook to obtain gauge. I've used double knit yarn throughout as I always do, acrylic yarn. I've joined it using a black sparkle. I'm avoiding getting too close because the black picks up Albie's hair so badly. It's like I should not be using this colour but I just love it so much. What I've done is I've got this lining so it's actually a tote bag and I've used it as the lining for the for my tote bag which just means that you can put bigger items in and they're not going to disappear through the granny squares and I then have crocheted one of the handles I still have one to do and there was some changes I wanted to do some improvements and I was going to entirely make a new sample and instead I decided to destroy sample two and remake it and this is what this is sample two version two the main improvement is that I put a row of granny squares on the inside so that when you hold it up you can't see the lining because before when I held it up you could see the lining colour on the inside and it just was giving me the ick to be honest it wasn't working very well so I have gone back and added in a row of granny squares on the inside and then I wanted to neaten up the handles which I've done the handles seem to take absolutely ages hence why I've not touched number two it just seemed to take longer than it did to make the entire bag which is probably grossly exaggerated but that's how it felt I just love to do the granny squares and anything else just isn't that much fun <laughs> um yes so in terms of progress I have remade I've made version two and I've written up the pattern other than the handles and I need to call for testers on it I have enough information from making handle one to write it up and then i'm going to need to add in pictures from handle from handle two so my plan with this one is to do all of the admin and call for testers on it and then spend a little bit of time on the early days of the test just finishing the handle it's probably only going to take me one or two days of my crochet time which is about like what four hours because i'm going to need to take step-by-step -step photos and then I can add them into the pattern and that can then get tested. Really, really pleased with that. Really like the way that it's turned out. One thing that I have decided from now on is that I'm gonna make two samples of every bag. I'm gonna make the first sample just to make it so I can get to grips with it. I'm gonna make a second one so I can take photos because I have found that taking the photos slows me down massively, especially if like in this one i rip it back and redo it all of the photos that i originally took and that i kept pausing progress to take were pointless and yes i feel like i don't quite have enough crochet time so making two of everything is gonna add to it thankfully bags are relatively quick to make they are very moorish i get them done quite quickly and i have ideas for like different colorways as well there's a few colorways missing within my wardrobe. So I'm gonna start where I can making two samples of every bag. And then that brings us on to this one. Oh, hang on, hang on. I do not have a name for this bag. It's currently going on, um, 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 it's currently going under the name of Shopper. Can you help me? Like, what do you want, what would you call it? I'm going to ask both our, I'm going to ask my subscription squad if they have any names and they're going to get the honour of naming it. But in case they draw any blanks as well or I can't think of anything, please can you add in what you would potentially call it? So this currently is going by the name Shopper because it's like something you would take to the shop, but is there anything else that you would call it? It needs to be one word and it needs to have a meaning. I always put the meaning in there. Um, I can 
Normally when I design, everything has a backstory. The backstory of this one is that I wanted a granny square tote bag. So that when I go shopping, I always have a bag for life with me, but it has a little bit of granny square vibes. So whatever name you can derive from that, please comment below and let me know. Which then takes us on to the second bag, this one. I am so insanely proud of this bag and also quite scared of it. It's like the best thing I've ever designed. And I'm so scared of the pattern because I'm scared of like, I'm just fearful. So much fear in my heart. I'm really hoping that you'll all love it. And if you don't love it, I feel like, what if I could never design anything better than this? And oh my goodness, getting too much in my feels. I love and adore this bag. This bag is double knit acrylic yarn. I used a 4.5 mil hook again. The difference with this bag compared to any of those that I've made is that the granny squares are monotone. So I've picked one color per granny square. They are in fact two round granny squares and they are joined using continuous join as you go. To create the bag shape, I have the plastic mesh. I've got some here. It is this plastic mesh that I then create lining pieces and that then reinforces the bag so that it keeps its shape as you can see at the moment. What is in here? Oh, a receipt. I was hoping it was like sweet. And then I have put the bag together and then the side and the bottom is one continuous piece of crochet. And then I have gone with the gold hardware, chunky gold hardware, the crochet handle and then I all I have left to do on this is to install the zip I got a little bit scared by it I just need to rip back what I've done and redo it and photograph it and then I can write up this pattern and call for testers it's looking like at the moment that this might end up being bag two of the subscription squad and then this will be January so this will be November to December and this is looking like it will be oct Are you okay love? Are you okay? <laughs> November to December, January to February. It's so gorgeous, like it just goes with every outfit. So I'm gonna schedule some time over this week to rip out this zip, figure out how to install it properly, get the photos done, get the pattern written up, and hoping to call for testers on this one and bag two by the end of the week. So it is a lot of work. There's a lot of admin that goes into testing from writing up the pattern, calling for testers, that needs all of the graphics and whatnot. It needs um, all of the, I set up everything. I set up the feedback form. I set up the form for that testers can use to even apply to test. Um, then I have the graphics that I post in the Facebook Testy Bestie group. There's the graphics that I post everywhere, calling for testers, linking to the spreadsheet. And then there is the do do Google document where my testy besties can access the document and then I also schedule out when I'm going to do all of the check-ins with my testies, testy besties and yeah there's a lot of admin but then once I've done all of that the test is usually pretty plain sailing. Okay I have worked on so many projects in September. I've actually done a lot. If I had channeled that energy into getting some of these projects done, then I would have more to show you, but I have done a lot. I actually started a granny square project and I've basically scrapped it. I just wasn't feeling it. So that was quite a few hours that are gone. We move. I have been adding to my ever growing stash of granny squares, which I've put in this wool warehouse a giant organza bag. I love to make granny squares and sometimes I find myself starting projects purely because I want to make granny squares and rather than do that now I just 
create a stockpile of granny squares which means that when it comes to working on patterns I can just pull from them I don't need to think about like I don't need to make the granny squares I can just do the magic of joining and eventually I want to make a giant blanket as well so these are also earmarked to end up in there the blanket's going to need about 900 squares so I'm nearly there I believe so I've added to this bag probably only like 20 to 30 just when I've wanted to make granny squares that's where they go and I've also started making centers I don't normally have a batch of centers ready to go my preferred way of making granny squares is to have a batch of centers and then add the second row on like the second row is my favorite row to work on because you just get more crochet time and you are establishing the pattern my favorite 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 row is the joining row because you really see it come together but when it comes to making the granny squares it's usually the second row that does it for me and i did have and still have a bag of centers that were just going in here and these are left over from an old project that was going to be entirely pink and then a few more have just found their way in here and it kind of works but it doesn't because what i like to do is have five to ten of the same color center and then I'll pick out 10 balls of yarn, all different colors, and I'll add the second round on. And that's how I like to batch make my granny squares for the bigger projects at least. So with this, it meant I had to pick out the same color, which is no hardship. I just wasn't truly enjoying it. Hence why these are still in here and I haven't really reached for them. So now what I've done is I've gone and got this organizer. I've left the sticker on so you can see it in case you want to get one. This is a three pound box from B&M and it is just a little organizer. It's got different compartments. And what I've done is took out some of those pinks and made some more so that when you open it, they're all in their own compartments, which makes Granny Square me so, so happy. So now I have five red centers and I can go and pick out five balls of yarn. So say I go like red, orange, yellow, green, blue. Then I can use each of those colors to go around those centers and those centers and those and those and those. And oh, it just flows, it feels so good so good in fact that i'm actually going to go and get another one of these so you can see here in the big compartment i've got a catch all and it's got random colors it might be that i only had enough yarn to make one or two and they're going in there but i would like to get another organizer so that i can have some space for uh the blues and greens probably going to end up with three i'm not going to lie because i have three tubs of yarn i have the greens the blues the greys the pinks the reds and purple and then I have yellows and oranges so I'd like three compartments and then I can go through and make centers and then when I want to make granny squares all I need to do is grab my organizers and uh, a bit of yarn and off I go these will be great on road trips because I can open up my organizer I can have a bag of yarn of maybe like 10 to 20 colors and I can just work my way through and make loads of granny squares and then what I do is I try to have a good mix I move my microphone because I am worried about the zip clanging and now I'm worried that you're not getting the sound okay this should help to show what I mean so here what I've done is I've created a load of purple centers and then I have gone with different second rounds so purple and white purple and mustard purple and pink purple and teal purple and turquoise so that would be me taking out the five centers picking out five different balls of yarn and putting the second round on which then means that I can go through this organizer and with my 10 
second round colours, I can create handfuls of granny squares. So I will go through every single compartment and there's going to be a blue and a pink and a sparkly aubergine and a coral and a red and a sparkly fuchsia and my signature pink and they've all got the purple on them because I've taken one from each compartment. And then it just means that I know that I'm not going to be duplicating granny squares because I don't want like 20 of them that are all this colourway. And because I have so many colours, I find that it helps to make a group of centres and then to then pick out colours that I want on the outer edge. It just works for me. I really hope that makes sense to you of how I do it. You know how I keep saying I'm going to go to a hotel one night, I can take my centres I can have my yarn and I can just create granny squares to my heart's content. Maybe I will uh, enable you to go and do the same. I then decided that because a frilly is so amazing, I needed a frilly pouch. Not a bag, but like just a little zip up pouch. So I jumped in to make that and not only did I decide to make it, I decided to make it in three different sizes. <laughs> say hello to the frilly pouch it is basically frilly in pouch form and again it is two round join as you go granny squares i've made reinforcement um panels with the mesh that i then cover with crochet and then i graft the granny squares on I've added the frill onto this and then I just need to put in a zip and then this will be done. That's all I need to do, the zip. The zip seems to be the bottleneck at the moment, doesn't it? If I'm honest, I think this one might end up being my Kindle cover because it just looks gorgeous. But the plan was to have them so that I could have different items in my bag. So for example, in Allure, I could put a couple of these in and I can have different projects on the go or it might be that I want like my notions in them. The other sizes that I've gone for are, so this is the mega, medium, and mini. So mini is two by three, medium is four by three, and then the mega is four by five. I like the word midi. We'll go with mega, midi, and mini. Now I hit a little bit of a hitch with this one, which is also what has completely slowed my roll on it, in that I ran out of the orange yarn, the joining yarn. I don't think I have enough yarn left to complete them because I need to put in the zip on the mega. The midi has got one panel put together, as has the mini. The reason it's all in different stages like this is because I've been taking photos of every single one and I decided it made sense for me to have photos of all three panel sizes next to each other and all three without a border. Um, so yeah, I made it a huge, huge amount of work for myself only to realise I probably don't have enough orange to complete them all. And I've got, I've got this much left. What I need to do is order the zip for the Mega, get that installed, and then I'm gonna make the Mini. And then I think that will be all of the orange yarn gone. And then I'm gonna remake the panel for the Midi. I'm gonna remake the panels and change the border color and do that one in a different color. I think the mini one's gonna look super, super cute. Tiny little frilly pouch that can be for like, I was thinking of putting my cards in there, my loyalty cards, like my Tesco card and my library cards and things like that will be in there. So I've done all of this crochet and they're so, so close. I just got a little bit disheartened because I felt like I'd run out of yarn and that I wasn't gonna be able to finish them. I actually sent Brad up into the loft to retrieve a unfinished object so that I could take the orange yarn off. And that left me with a stack of granny squares. And I showed you them in my previous vlog when we were driving and there was loads of rain and flood water on the road.
there's just a lake in the middle of the are you okay i was take i was frogging the the squares and i decided to remake the squares as well so originally they had a black center and then they had the third round was this color this color for me is slightly cursed it has really bad memories attached to it it just it just gives me the ick like be gone be gone out of my life you're not important so when i took these apart i was like i'm gonna take that color out you know i'm done with that color so i remade them i remade them all there's a stack of 22 and i took them all apart i changed the center to this neutral and i changed the third round to this pink and i've done them all and i am now weaving in the ends on them and this is for a project that i started i joined version one in this color years ago and it was granny squares that i was then knitting together to make a jumper and version two i tried to join in this orange with the squares and i was just like it's too much it's too much i know i won't wear it i'm not really enjoying it and i didn't do any samples or gauge i just jumped in and it wasn't quite working knitting takes me too long for me to jump in with that much reckless abandonment so remade these and not only have I started to weave in the ends, but I've also made a gauge swatch for the joining color that I want to use, which is here. So the joining color is this off-white. It's got an ever so slight pink hue to it. I think it's going to look really nice. And they are definitely colors that I feel that I can wear and wear comfortably. I don't mind like a little pouch with the bright orange, but wearing it as an entire top, I know I won't reach for it as often. I have a bright orange blazer and I probably wear it a couple of times a year. So whatever I put that amount of knitting time in, I want to wear until it falls apart. And then I made the gauge swatch and I've knit this on four, four mil needles. And this just needs the end cutting off and then I'm gonna block it and I'm gonna do my gauge and then I can join these together. I'm gonna to use continuous join as you go to join these together. And then what I'm gonna do is knit the rest of it. What I'm gonna say is that I'm putting no pressure on myself for this one to be a pattern. In the past, I really, really tried to make it a pattern and I was getting quite in over my head because I haven't really knit a whole lot of anything. So to make a garment that was crochet and knit and then to try and grade that as well. So instead this is a just, a just because pattern. It's just for fun for me. That's not to say that I won't ever release it, but I imagine I'll need to make a couple of samples before I feel ready to have it graded, tech edited and tested and it takes me such a long time to knit that that will not be any time soon. This is more a, a, a passion project for me, something to work on around the other things that I am doing specifically to publish. If I do ever release this, I will be finding somebody to grade it for me and somebody to do the tech editing. It's not something that I want to do or feel that I have the time to do anymore and that adds to the cost so I need to save up for that as well. I since I had this idea which was like probably 2018 I first had this idea come to me I have seen a couple of knitting and crochet items come out and be released. I'm not surprised because I know that a creative a creative idea will go knocking to a designer knock 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 this could be an amazing pattern and if the designer doesn't grab it with two hands and do it somebody else will make it i totally appreciate that i'm also fully aware that there are lots of patterns out there that could be considered similar but they're different because of the construction and different methods and so if i do ever put this pattern out it won't step on the toes of any other designers that have done knitting and crochet because I have different construction and different overall look that I want it to be. 
I thought I'd show you because I have remade all of these granny squares and I've started weaving in the ends and that deserves a special mention. I also started this project and I have woven in the ends on the granny squares and I started making the lining and again that just needs some crochet time to get them done. Probably would be done if I hadn't started doing these and this and oh these because I did start this right at the start of the month. What can I say? I love the granny square bit and then the other bit doesn't get done as quickly. This is destined to be a giant comfy zipper pouch. Inspired by Comfort, I want it to be, it's not going to have the reinforcement panels, I'm going to just line it with crochet, it's going to be big, soft, squishy and you can just stuff it full of yarn. It's a very generous size and I can get a lot in there. I think I'm going to make an even bigger one as well. But let's get that one finished before I add to the sizes. So I believe that is all of the works in progress that I want to share with you. I have one more over there, but we're gonna save that for another day. I've got two more sections to go through with you. One is my new yarn that I have acquired, and then the other section is my October goals. So let me grab all of the yarn that I have acquired this month, show you the colors. <laughs> I haven't bought yarn in ages, I haven't felt the need to, I just basically stopped looking and then this month because I reorganised my yarn stash and I split out my colours into pots, it created space that I could add more yarn, it helped me to see that the shades that I could add in and because I want to make the giant blanket, I wanted to add in some more shades just so I had some different colours in there. Started looking and I found all of this. Now I've got to try and remember where it all came from. First up, this is from the Pound Shop. This purple aubergine sparkle is from the Pound Shop. It was 50 grams and it was a pound. And... I've already made granny squares with that. We sat and made granny squares together. I believe both of these are also from the pound shop. If it's not from the pound shop, then it's from basically what I do is anywhere locally that, that stocks yarn, I go and have a look. So I purchased from Audi, One Beyond, the pound shop, pound stretcher, home bargains, B&M, anywhere like that that has budget acrylic yarn if there's a shade that i don't have then i will acquire it so these are either one beyond or pound shop and i got this glitter it's actually white but because it has a gray sparkle through it you could say that it looks gray overall but it's a glitter white i have a glitter white but it has a white glitter through it this has a gray glitter and then I got navy blue because I don't have any in my stash. I used it all up in making centers. So I have added in this. Again, these 50 gram balls were a pound. Back in the day, not even back in the day, but like last year and the year before, you used to get three balls from the pound shop for a pound. So you'd get 150 grams for a pound. And now it's a pound for 50 grams. I also got this sparkle blue. And I got this sparkle pink. And these were either Pound Shop or One Beyond. 50 grams pound each. So I've acquired quite a bit of sparkle this month. And then I went into Audi. Audi are always getting yarn in. And when they go in, I go and have a look. I wanted to just add shades to my double knit. I'm not growing any of my other weights of yarn. Just a double knit for me to fuel my granny square addiction. And I got this one, it's called Matcha. And it is a very, very faint green. And you're either gonna love it or loathe it. You either think it's a really nice shade or you think it looks like somebody weed in snow. And I was considering buying an entire sweater weight because I really, really like it, but I just got the one ball. I think 100 grams was £1.29, 
I also got khaki green because I have the smallest amount left of my previous one. And then I also got this rust burgundy shade, which I do not have in my stash at all. So that is a new shade for me. And then these I believe are from One Beyond. I got this pink, it's like a coral pink. I do not have that shade. It doesn't match any of the pink that I already own. And then I got this red. It is more towards the deeper red rather than the rosy red. But again, I have, this is the only red in my stash. I need to go and find a rosy red. And these were one pound something. So I think overall I've probably spent one, two, three, four, five, under £10, around £10 on adding to my yarn stash. Usually when I come home, I'm so excited to crack into them and make granny squares. And I have actually cracked into these today for a new project that I am working on as part of my October goals. We went through the milestones, everything that I want to do more of in October, everything I want to do less of in October. We've gone through my finished objects, which are also my test projects at the moment. We've been through my works in progress. We've been through the new yarn that I've acquired and that just leaves October goals. I'm going to get a little bit more water and then we're going to go through that as well. Okay, October goals. <sighs> October's a busy month. I need to get a lot, a lot, a lot done. And today is the, it's the 7th of October today. We have three weeks ahead, including this week, so four weeks. And I want to release the comfort cushion. I want to get the, what is currently called the shopper bag tested. I want to get the shoulder bag into testing and I want to design the next bag or at least start designing the next bag. And I want to complete my frilly pouch in the mega size at least. I'm a little bit intimidated by this month. I am not gonna lie that that is a lot to do. I could leave bag three until next month. And I could also leave bag four until next month and focus on getting comfort, the shopper bag and complete the frilly pouch. So I think I'm gonna highlight those as my priority and then if I do happen to have a little bit more time in this month, I can get the shoulder bag out to testing. I had it in my mind. I wanted to make myself some mittens because the cold weather is coming. And I also would quite like to get this pouch done so I can start putting some projects in it. I already know that's way more crochet time than I actually have in the month, let alone admin time. So. On top of that, I have quite a lot going on this week and I know that I'm gonna need to take a little bit of time, give myself some space to recover and feel all the things. So yeah, this month looks and feels like a mountain and I'm gonna need all your prayers and all your encouragement and support to get through it and get on with it because, hmm. And then you can probably see like it feels quite overwhelming and I feel a little bit paralyzed by it and that's really unhelpful. Then in terms of admin, I have the big blanket that I'm making. I wanted to create some trackers so I could keep a tally of how many squares I'm making. And then I also wanted to reach out to my sub squadders and get their honest feedback on bag one and the whole sub squad so that I can improve it. And I also want to do the same for my planners and my workbooks. And that's gonna be a lot of admin. So I'm gonna to need to split that down and spread that out over the coming months. I want to prioritize the planners because I want to have a restock of planners in November. I'm gonna need a new planner for 2025 which means you're also going to need a new planner so i want to get that feedback so i know what areas can be improved and how i can help people use them to like organize their life to the most 
So I'm going to put planner feedback. And then what I'm going to do is I will speak to my sub squadders during the chat, obviously, and then I will contact them between now and January to make sure that I'm getting feedback and doing everything to the best of my ability. At least that will give them a couple of bags to try out as well and a couple of months sign ups to give feedback on. And then workbooks is something that I will obtain feedback on next year because I would like to spruce those up, make a few changes that I'm aware of that I want to make and get the feedback and then relaunch those and add a few more to my collection as well. Let's break this down into small tasks so that we can get it done. So by October, by the end of October, I want to have released comfort. Please can you comment below whether I need to do that on a weekday or a weekend, or does it not matter? Um, I want to get the shopper bag tested. Please can you comment below the names of that bag as well? I want to get that tested. And then I want to complete my frilly pouch, which means I need to order a zip and get that finished up. I want to make the trackers for the big blanket. I want to get the feedback on my planners. So that next month, yeah, next month I can make those changes and I can put the restock up there. I'm thinking, my thoughts are that the restock will be on Black Friday and what I'll do is it will basically be like a 24 hour flash sale. And I will say to people, you've got 24 hours to grab yours. And then I, the next day I'm going to place the order with the place that creates my planners. And then I'm going to get them shipped to me and get them sent out to you within like the week. And if you miss that time, then you're not going to get one. And if people want one, great, because I'm also going to be ordering mine. So they are my must haves in terms of progressing my patterns, admin, and then my nice to do's would be the comfy project bag and bag four. Okay. Whew. That feels better, that feels manageable. In terms of deadlines and prioritizing based on time, I need to focus on this one, the shopper bag. I'm gonna get the pattern written up after this. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna call for testers. I'm really hoping that I've given my testers enough time. I know that some of my testers do have a stash of granny squares, so that will help them. Um, I'm hoping I've not harmed my marketing, future marketing, by having to rush my testers. I'm really, really sorry, testing testers. Please forgive me. I'm trying, really, really trying. And I'm very, very mindful of this happening again. So I'm going to make some changes. Yeah, okay. Feels a bit better. Less paralyzed now. I also need to order the zip. And I already know what I need for bag four so I'm gonna order the and then I'm gonna order the zip for the frilly pouch then once they arrive we'll be able to crack on with those in the future and in terms of test what do I need to do I need to check in with my comfort testers and thank them and conclude that test. I need to send the code to my Allure testers and I need to do check-ins on my Frilly and then I need to start the shopper test. Okay, I know what I'm doing with my tests. I know what I'm doing with my my patterns I know what I need to order I know what I need to do for my admin and I know what my nice to do's are I really want to get onto bag four so I am gonna just get my head down and get this stuff done oh. 
Let's do a little section as well on future HDDC. So not just next month, but things that I want to, that I'm working towards at some point in the near future. And that is the membership, which I've already talked about. I, I kind of just want to drop everything and do that now because I really want to talk about how much I've been making from my collections and the changes I'm making and the improvements I'm seeing. So I don't know if I'm just making it harder on myself. I wanted to launch that subscription with a few videos there for you to already watch. So do you want me to just get started now and add in the extra videos as and when I can? Or do you want the backlog of videos there to watch? So I was gonna do like videos on um, how much I made from my best-selling pattern in the first month and to date how much I made when I released my first collection and how much I've made from that to date, how much I made from the collection I've just launched in 2024. And then I want to do my income reports for each month. Do I launch the membership with income reports from August and September so that we're up to date and then from then on continue through October every single month onwards from here on, as well as um, that'll be like the core content and then as and when I can I'll add in additional videos so if I read a book and I'm making changes or anything like that I can make an additional video or do you want me to and on top of that I will then go back and do the additional videos that I said so like my collection to date my best-selling pattern to date um, last month last year's last month's collection and I'll add them in as and when I have the recording time because I can record two or three videos potentially a month so I can put out a couple there but to start with five or six will take me months to do or do you want me to wait until I've recorded all of that so that you have all of the backlog there to watch and then I can do a catch-up vlog of all of my income from this year and then we start doing the monthly ones do you want me to just get started or do you want everything like can you please help me decide because if you're happy with just the one video I can just start that now and we can get the ball rolling and then I can add but if you want to see it all I'm gonna have to wait for a little while which one would you prefer let me know I know I've asked for so much feedback but you truly do help me so so much and I just want to thank you all for watching this video for all the support you give me for all the encourage encouragement you give me i know that i'm gonna have some messages from some of you like what can i do to help what admin can i help you with and i truly truly appreciate every single one of you and i also want to share the comment of the week here as well with you i truly love reading all of your video all of your comments on the videos and I do my best to reply to them all and have a little chat with you all because I know what it feels like when you comment on your YouTuber's video and then they reply like, Ooh! So I really wanna do that for you all as well. So this is the comment of the week and thank you so, so much for every single comment that I receive. Do you know what I didn't add in the whips is that I finished Carter's blanket and I did the whole video on that last month, September. And he's one of my best viewed vlogs this year. And I think it's because on the thumbnail it had the box and you were all intrigued. Is that the case? Because I'm thinking of purchasing a box for myself and then every single whip that I want to show you, I'm gonna put in the box and I'll lift up the lid and do the whole reveal. So, and I can do that with finished objects. Or is it just because it's a blanket and we love blankets? Like what made you click on that video? I would love to know. Um, and obviously I've asked you to do comments, like so many comments. So every time I say just comment, just do the comment. And then if it means there's five comments from you, so be it. Because I truly do want to know all of this information. Um, and then there was going to be one more thing that I wanted to talk about and it's just gone out of my head. The other thing for HDDC that I am wanting to do is I have a Facebook group specifically for Granny Square lovers and I want to 
get that group going again. I started it last year and then I ended up pausing it because I just felt overwhelmed with everything. And obviously I took a big break from HDDC and that's one of the last things I need to restart. I just worry like, are you gonna get bored of seeing me talking about granny squares? Obviously not, because it's a granny square group and that's what you wanna see, right? Um, I was doing like daily prompts. I don't know if daily's too much. Do you want to talk about granny squares every single day or is it okay to just do every couple of days? Um, my thoughts were that I was gonna do like a roundup of patterns, granny square things that I'd seen that week or that month to share with you. I wanted to talk about patterns that were being released I was hoping to get other designers to join and that they would give you some really decent discount codes. Um, I wanted to share my patterns that were being released. I wanted it to be a place that designers could ask for granny square testers. Um, so what I'm asking you really is, are you in there? Because if not, I'll link below, please join. And like, what do you enjoy seeing in the Facebook groups that you're in? Is it people asking for help on projects? Is it people sharing progress? Like, what do you wanna see in there? Can you help me? I have a grand vision. It's pointless if you lot think it's boring. Okay. That is everything. Thank you so, so much for spending this time with me. It has been great to sit and do this and I'm looking forward to doing next month and seeing the progress. Hopefully I have inspired you to pick up your planners and to do some planning for yourself. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you so, so much for replying, for leaving comments on absolutely everything that I've asked. And I will see you in the comments and we'll chat soon. Take care. Oh, granny squares, granny squares, granny squares. Okay. Freddy is my granny square mini cushion. It's adorable. I'm gonna have to shut the blinds. Damn it.